Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Electromaker Show. This is your midweek roundup of all things Maker and Embedded and Lovely. Now, this is quite an exciting week for Electromaker because we're starting to be able to announce some of the things that we have been planning, um, and that will be happening this year. And we have a new feature called Product of the Week, and this is featuring our in-house engineer, educator, and general gadget guru, Robin Mitchell. Um, and it's, yeah, something that people have been dreaming up for quite a while, and I'm very happy to see that it's finally here. We'll also be announcing the winner of the NRF7002 contest and talking about the cheapest microcontroller that has flash that you can buy and surprisingly it's a 32-bit microcontroller which is kind of amazing anyway and uh, with all of that to get through let's get on with the show One quick note before we start this week's show. You may have noticed this is our 99th episode, um, which is incredible. Um, and yes, we will be uh, having a celebration for our 100th episode next week. We'll be doing a massive giveaway, and we'll be looking back on some of the cooler parts of the Electromaker show. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, uh, whether you this is the first episode you've seen, or whether you've been with us since the very start, you're not going to want to miss next week's show. Um, we're doing a ludicrous giveaway, and of course, it's going to be a bit of a party for us as well. Um, Who ever thought that this show would make it to 100 episodes? Thank you all so much for sticking with us. We are going to start this week's show by talking about a new Electromaker feature. I'm very excited to finally be able to talk about this. I've sort of known this has been in the pipeline for a while. But we have a new video show called Product of the Week. And um, as you may guess, it's about a, a product. Although confusingly, it's not actually going to be out every single week. So yes, the first episode of Product of the Week has just dropped. It is available on YouTube. Um, and uh, yes, uh, this is from Robin Mitchell. Now, if you've been following Electromaker for a while, you will be familiar with Robin. He is the Electromaker educator. He is also the gadget guru. He seems to be collecting names quite quickly. However, he is very much the more professional end of, uh, of what Electromaker is. I'm a hobbyist. I've messed around, taught myself coding, and done some stuff with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis in the past. Robin's a legit engineer. So when he talks about something, he talks about it with a level of knowledge that I can't quite bring to it. And um, the video itself, the uh, Electromaker, um, the Product of the Week videos are really beautifully shot, as you can see. It's a little bit different to me. I'm just a fool in an attic and I talk enthusiastically every week. Whereas if you would like to have uh, focused videos about things, these are going to be coming quite soon. And of course, we are starting with the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, if there's one thing that everyone involved with Electromaker has in common, it's that we all love the Pico. Um, yeah, Raspberry Pi did pretty good for their very first microcontroller development board and of course the microcontroller on it. Um, from the lowly hobbyists like myself who um, I can program it in MicroPython I can get the C SDK up and running as you know I've done a tutorial on it but I'm no engineer and when you start to really get into the weeds uh, it's way above my head whereas Robin has been in the weeds as an engineer pretty much throughout he knows how to program pretty much any kind of microcontroller so it's great to hear him talk with enthusiasm about the Pico. Now, as exciting as it is to have a new video series coming from Electromaker, um, and like I said, it, it, it's product of the week, but it's, I think it's going to be every two weeks or so. I need to ask Robin about that. I can't quite remember. Um, the other thing that's exciting about it is, uh, in Electromaker fashion, we're going to be giving all of it away. Um, so yes, uh, this product of the week is the Raspberry Pi Pico, and uh, we're going to be giving one of those away. Um, and that tends to be what happens uh, here at Electromaker Towers, albeit the ones in the UK or my particular attic of dreams. Um, I get something that I really love playing with, like this NRF7002, Two, which, by the way, we'll be announcing the winner of that today. And then I, I give it away to someone, and that's exactly what's going to be happening here. So for this very first Product of the Week video, um, yes, uh, head down to the comments. Uh, tell us how much you love the Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, leave the hashtag P-I-C-C-O, Pico, and we will be picking a winner for the first Product of the Week in next week's show. And yes, if you'd like to know more about the Raspberry Pi Pico, get a proper deep dive from someone who knows what they're talking about, and see some projects that you could make with the Raspberry Pi Pico, head to the link in the description to the first Electromaker product of the week. Um, it is really exciting for me, as someone who has just been working alone pretty much on the show in my attic for a very long time, to see other things coming out from Electromaker that are just nothing to do with me, but that fit exactly so nicely with what the Electromaker show is. So I really hope you enjoy product of the week. I absolutely know that I do, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they choose for the next one. One other quick announcement from Electromaker is um, Electromaker of the Month will be continuing for this year as well. If you've never heard of it before, um, Electromaker of the Month is something that we ran every month last year. A panel of judges pick the top three projects from the Electromaker project page. That is this page here. If you look under Community on Electromaker.io and click on Projects, these are all community-submitted projects. You could submit your project today. All you need is a free Electromaker account, and yeah, you can upload your project. We even have a guide as to how to do it. Um, and what I'm going to suggest is this 
Electromaker of the Month page, uh, Will You Be an Electromaker of the Month prize winner in 2023, um, I will leave a link just to that in the description. And the reason for that is the link to the community project page is there, how to make an Electromaker account is there. Um, I shot a special video just about it that you can watch that explains it as well. Um, there's even a link out to um, how you can upload your project to Electromaker. There's a guide uh, for piece by piece how you can put your project up there, how to document it. Um, if you've already documented your project on another website, you can even just import that into the Electromaker site so you have a chance of winning. Um, and this time round, Last month we gave away hardware to the winners and swag to the second and third place. I think there was a gift voucher in there somewhere for the winner as well. Um, for at least the first three months of this year, we're just giving away cold, hard cash, which is a language I think everybody can understand. So each month we'll be picking three projects to win first, second and third prize of Electromaker of the Month. And you will win $150 if you were in first with some Electromaker swag, including a not this hoodie, but a cool Electromaker t-shirt and some bits and pieces. Second prize wins $100 in that and the third prize wins $50 in that. Uh, and of course, the other thing that may mean more to some of you than anything is that if your project is picked, we will be shouting it every way we know how. Uh, we will be featuring your project on the Electromaker Show, putting it on social media, and uh, uh, yeah, it will be sent out in a newsletter, and you will even get um, an Electromaker certificate for uh, saying that you have won. Um, if you'd like to see what kind of projects have won in the past, there's also a timed link in this article to um, the Electromaker Show where I featured some of the winners last year. Uh, so yeah, that is it for now. Uh, we'll definitely be coming back to the Electromaker of the Month. Um, of course, when we have the first winners, we'll be talking about those. But if you've never uploaded a project to Electromaker, it's a fantastic community hub anyway. The amount of projects up here on a daily basis uh, amazes me, and the quality of them is incredibly high. Um, but yes, um, we love to see any kind of project. As far as I'm concerned, a project documented with passion is fantastic, no matter how complex that project is. In fact, sometimes simpler projects that are documented well are more worthy, uh, not more worthy, give more worth to the community because there's a lot of beginners out there looking for simple explanations for how to do stuff. That isn't to say that I don't also love insane edgy implementations of dinosaur potential thinking patterns. Uh, that's a Cool idea for a project I just improvised there. <laughs> okay, getting off topic. Electromaker of the Month. Continuing in 2023, win some cash, upload your projects. Now, just before Christmas, um, we talked about the interactive Christmas tree. This is a project from Oli Q. He is an Electromaker community member. He's in our Discord server. Um, he's also someone who um, is a, uh, making amazing YouTube videos about lots of different hardware projects. But let's quickly just give an overview of what this was. So this is a live video feed of a Christmas tree in Oli's house. And as you can see, there are real lights on the tree overlaid by these animated uh, lights as well. And if you click on any one of them, you can change the color. Now, uh, the project is now read only. The project is over but for the time that it was running um, if you clicked it it would change in real time and you would see it on the webcam there was also these uh, baubles and the baubles were all color displays which terrifyingly were open to the internet to paint whatever on them they wanted uh, the idea was not dissimilar to uh, place which was a subreddit um, of basically you draw one pixel and it's just everyone draws whatever it's a complete anarchy kind of thing um, and it, yeah there's a few amazing kind of things that would happen I mean there's all the usual stuff of people trying to draw their national flags or whatever but huge amounts of people would get together to try and draw uh, just cartoon characters or things that they were into um, and it, yeah, it's sort of an amazing thing um, inspired by that and indeed using some of the tech behind it Ali has now written up exactly how this all came together now this is the Electromaker Projects page, as you can see, and um, the project is a fantastic write-up of it. But before we have a look at this, I just want to point out that Oli has been putting out hardware-focused videos on his YouTube channel pretty much every month for almost a year. In fact, um, uh, two years ago was that. So there was a few two years ago, and now, um, yeah, almost every month something has been coming out on his channel. He is really working hard at this, and yet his YouTube channel remains criminally undersubscribed. So if you are watching this, please do head over to Oli's channel and give him a subscription. He's working very hard on this, and he deserves it. Uh, the video about the Christmas tree itself is, uh, yeah, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's funny um, and it goes through a lot of the uh, different ways he had to think about this. One of the things I found really surprising about it um, is that not only uh, is this a video about the hardware and about how he made it work, it's also a video about how Ollie uh, came up with the, pro uh, sorry, solved the problem of once you've made a project, how do you get people to see it? 
how do you get people to interact with your interactive Christmas tree? So the, the uh, video itself also goes over the lengths he went to to try and actually drum up interest on it and how you do that in, a, in this modern era. It's very interesting to me. Um, but yes, the if you would like the cold hard facts as to how it came together, this is a great write-up of it. Um, and in short, um, as you probably have guessed, you have a hardware element um, and the software element, which is the website and how you deal with secure login and all this kind of stuff. Um, also, uh, every hour or so, I believe, um, they uh, all of the screens were shot over on the interactive uh, Christmas tree Twitter profile. Sorry, I'm st stumbling over my words a little bit. I'm s still suffering from the Berlin winter, and this is an unheated attic, and it gets to a certain point where I've, when I've been recording for a while, I have real trouble speaking, which is not ideal for a YouTube YouTuber, I know. Um, so yes, uh, this is the interactive Christmas tree, and there are now time lapses of all the different ones on here. In fact, I believe the one with the dolphin with the guns, um, a little EM shows up at one point, which might have been me uh, representing for Electromaker in a way that was no near as fancy as anything else that happened here. Anyway, um, if you'd like to know more about the Interactive Christmas Tree Project, it is all available here. I will leave a link to this in the description of the video. You can read up on it on the Electromaker website and of course click through to Ollie's channel here. As I mentioned, go and give him a subscription. He deserves it. And uh, yeah, this is a fantastic project. If you are enjoying this show, it would mean a lot if you could scroll down under the video and click the subscribe button. In fact, once you've done that, you can also click the little drop down next to it and uh, choose whether you would like notifications or not. Now, the difference there is all of your subscriptions show up under your subscriptions tab in the left side of YouTube, but um, your alerts are actually a very special column just up here. You get notifications just when certain channels upload. So as you can see, these are the Electromaker show uploads and there is a new upload uh, from the channel, which will be uh, occasional uploads about different different products, um, but still very much in the Electromaker shed. Um, and the reason there's two separate ones of those is quite simply if you're someone like me who has literally thousands of YouTube subscriptions, I subscribe to every channel I find half interesting, um, sometimes you want to get notifications for when certain channels upload. And the other thing, of course, is uh, liking the video. Now, I know everyone who's on YouTube says, please like the video. There's a reason for it. If you like the video, YouTube will look at the other kind of videos that you like and will make it far more likely that they will uh, say to other people, hey, Electromaker is a thing that you might also like. Uh, yes. Now, there is a far more direct way you can support the Electromaker show, however, if you would prefer. So yes, shopping in the Electromaker shop is by far the best way you can support us. I will keep it very short today. There are a bunch of products from pretty much everyone that you would need, from the smallest hobby project or the first present you buy someone you want to get into the hobby, to the highest thing that you would probably need um, for full-on hardcore embedded development. Either way around, before you buy stuff, check if we have it in the Electromaker store. If you buy it from us, um, yeah, you're supporting the show, which is the main thing, obviously, for me. That's kind of important. But also, um, you know, we, there's a number of, of advantages to us. We have a very high trust pilot score, um, and we have uh, very good rates for shipping pretty much worldwide. So that is it for this week's uh, bit of advertisement for ourselves, I guess, as it is. Uh, we do this because we don't have advertisements from anyone else or asks for any kind of donations. So yeah, that's why I do this every week. Thank you for your patience. Let's get back to the fun stuff. Now, this is usually the part of the show where we have funding website things, but today it's not a funding website. It's a marketplace website where you can buy cool stuff direct from the people that make them, which doesn't run off the tongue quite as well as funding website things, but what are you going to do? Today, we're looking at Tendi. Now, we're going to be looking specifically at this serial Wi-Fi adapter for retro computers. Uh, just before I do, uh, one of the weird things, when I was putting this show together, Tindy played a massive part in this sort of, like, getting cool uh, products that are made by people and being sent to people and all this kind of stuff. And I thought we'd talk about Tindy in almost every show, and I didn't, specifically down to the fact that we got so caught up in funding websites that I never really got back to it. But um, I should spend more time on Tindy because there's a huge amount of amazing things that you can buy, not only in the sort of smart home and uh, DIY electronics, and there's some cool DIY wearable stuff you can get on Tindy. It's also a hotbed of uh, DIY synthesizer modules as well. So you can expect to see a bit more Tindy going forward on the show as well, although of course there'll be plenty of crowd supply in Kickstarter too. Now, the serial Wi-Fi modem for vintage computers is something that I thought I'd featured on the Electromaker show before. I think there was a Hackaday write-up about it or something like that. But the idea behind it is relatively simple. You add 
Wi-Fi connectivity to retro computers. Um, but there's actually a little bit of complexity in the hardware side of getting that going. Um, if I find that article, I will link it in the description. It's a fascinating read. However, this is the store page for that device. And it is a $35 add-on to it, pretty much any retro computer that will allow you to attach it to modern Wi-Fi systems. Now, um, Action Retro, which is a channel that I uh, became aware of, I think, a couple of years ago. I think, I, if, I'm, I may be, if I'm forgetting, if I'm remembering this wrong, Action Retro, and you see this, I apologize, but I believe it was actually a viral video of you getting Minecraft working on an ancient Apple computer. That is the first thing that popped up in my feed. Um, but it's a fantastic retro uh, computing channel. And it has a, has a, a, a um, video specifically on this. This is the uh, RS32 adapter. This is it out of its case. If I scroll back up to the top here, you'll see um, it is this. This is that. That is this. Um, and... Uh, yeah, um, so if you want to see it in action, you can come to the page and look at this. However, um, one thing I didn't realize until I looked at this again for uh, this show is that, well, firstly, this is version 4 of it, so it has it's a, it has had four iterations, but there's been a massive firmware update as well. And when I say massive, it really is. I mean, they've added a, a, a file system, they've added a file manager, they've added OTA firmware updates to it, which is not an insignificant update to the thing. Um, and the entire thing just costs $35, which seems very reasonable if you have a, a, any collection of old retro computers or even just one and you like the idea of uh, using it but um, and attaching to your Wi-Fi router. Yeah, um, it's certainly worth taking a look. So if you are interested in finding out more, head to the link in the description to this Tindy page. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see, uh, read a, a bunch about it. And of course, watch this video from Action Retro as well. Um, just be careful, Action Retro is another one of those ones that if you do go to the channel, you may be there for quite some time. It's a treasure trove. So, uh, yes, add Wi-Fi to your retro computer. If you are going to do this or do plan to do this or just have a lovely retro computer in the garage, tell me what it is. I'm a little bit of a fan of that. I really love the idea of one day having the time to go back and have a raid of the garage in the house that I grew up in and pull out all of the beautiful BBC. We have a BBC Micro. There's an Acorn computer in there. I think my old 486DX is in there as well. Um, I remember just about being able to run Quake on it. Anyway, um, Tindy. RS-232 uh, serial Wi-Fi modem, there'll be a link in the description. So on last week's show, we started a contest to win this, the NRF7002 development kit. Um, and there's a much more beautiful uh, version. I, I could just hold it up like this, but yeah, there's a very beautiful photo of it here as well. Um, now, uh, this is a companion IC. The 7002 is a Wi-Fi 6 chip. Um, in fact, it's this little chip you can see down here. Um, and it is a companion IC, so it works with another MCU. In this case, it's working with the NRF5340 system on chip. That's one of Nordic Semiconductor's workhorse chips that does Bluetooth and Zigbee and all that kind of stuff. Now, talked about ex extensively on last week's show and um, when it was launched and we were lucky enough to get a pre-launch version of it and we'll be giving that away um, although it is the final version um, and uh, uh, yes I have had a little bit of time to sort of have just a, a small fiddle with this but I spent a lot more time reading the docs than I have actually playing with the board itself as I'm working in cafes at the minute more than more, more often than not it's very cold in the attic of dreams however um, if you are interested in this kind of stuff and are a little bit um, kind of I was a bit intimidated when I first started working with Nordic stuff because it's a step above the Arduino and Raspberry Pi kind of things that I started with. The documentation really is amazing. Um, and one of the things about Nordic stuff that I really love is the dev zone, which is Nordic's uh, message board for support, is populated by people who know a lot about Nordic stuff, but also a lot of Nordic staff who, when you open a ticket um, on something, you know, you say, oh, I'm, I'm trying to do this and it's not working, um, they will work through that with the same hardware and try and come up with a possible problem that you're having um, or a solution. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's really quite incredible the amount um, of work they put into helping people with problems with their kit. Anyway. That is enough of that. We're here because we are going to announce the winner of this contest. And the winner is Gary Fuller, which is pleasing because Gary's a long-time viewer of the Electromaker show. Um, it's nice to see you in the comments, Gary, so often as we do. Congratulations. Um, so we'll be in touch with you as to how we can get this out to you. Uh, the comment was talking about the software-defined radio from last week's show, which was an ESP32 handheld radio device, um, which was uh, interesting. Uh, he mentions that uh, he, used to wanting, he used to want a frequency scanner as a kid back when police frequencies weren't encrypted. Now, I can't remember what the hardware itself was, but one of my neighbors actually had a radio that could pick up some 
police stuff. And I remember being super excited as a child slash teenager, sitting with him, listening to a police chase happening in Seam Harbour, which was a fair bit south from where I grew up. Um, and so, yes, uh, only now does it occur to me I should continue build, uh, cont- I should consider building my own. I could even use the NRF 7002 board and connect it to my laptop via, via Wi-Fi 6. Clearly an idea that needs fleshing out some more, but it would be a great fun project. Well, now, Gary, you get the chance to try fleshing out that project some more with the NRF uh, 7002 development kit that will be winging its way to you. Uh, thank you to everyone who entered this and all the competitions that we run. And if you are interested in finding more ab- out about the board itself, um, I talked about it extensively in last week's show. I'll leave a link in the description of this show as well. It's uh, an exciting time to be getting into this kind of development because really, in terms of low power boards that can connect in multiple ways to multiple protocols, this board kind of does it all. It's not the only one that does, of course, but yeah, Nordic have got um, you know a, got a good reputation for a good reason. Anyhow, that is enough. Uh, congratulations, Gary. Let's get on with the show. Now, up next, what is the cheapest microcontroller that you can buy? Well, that's not the easiest question in the world, because there are microcontrollers that you can buy that cost almost nothing, three or four cents. But these are not microcontrollers that you could use in any meaningful sense. They are one-time programmable things that you can flash once, um, and then that's it. It's done. Um, Not very useful for people who want to mess around with parts that they can use more than once, and certainly not useful for people like me who want to be able to maybe mess up once and then erase their programming and then start again. Um, So what is the actual cheapest flash microcontroller that you can buy? Well, there's an incredible blog post by Jay Carlson that goes into this. And as the title of the article conveniently says, the cheapest flash microcontroller you can buy is actually an ARM Cortex M0+. This is a company called Puya Semiconductor, and uh, at the time of him writing this, you could get their 32-bit ARM Cortex-0 microcontrollers for 10 cents, which is incredible. I mean, that's 10 cents if you buy a reel of 100 or 1,000 of them, I would imagine. But even so, it's it's kind of incredible. Um, And this is a general, uh, kind of high level, but it goes into a decent amount of detail, right up uh, as to, um, you know, what these things can do, where you can get them, how to work with them, and how they do actually stack up against things like the uh, STM32. Because bear in mind that again, if you're buying STM32s in a large enough value, you're still going to be paying only like 50 or 60 cents, but that's still a lot more than 10 cents. However, there is one thing before we go into this article at all, which is either this article itself has had an effect or the sod's law of talking about cheap things. Um, at the time of looking at this, um, Looking at the um, uh, looking specifically at PY32 parts on LCSC, um, the cheapest that I saw was um, around about 20 cents, which is still very, very cheap. Um, but uh, oh no, I tell a lie. Look, there's a there is a 12 cent part if you buy more than 500 of them, and that is for the uh, QFN 16 package version of the PY32 F002 AW15U6TR, which is a catchy name. Anyway, this is the article itself, um, and it's amazing. Uh, it is one of the most fun articles I've read in a while, um, and uh, this is exactly the kind of thing that got me into more than just Arduino. This is exactly the kind of thing that got me interested in um, seeing what other kinds of options were out there, because this is a, yeah, a, a write-up of what this thing can do. Um, the basic version of the chip has a, can do one hell of a lot, actually. Um, it is an ARM Cortex M0 Plus, so straight off the bat, you get um, serial wire debugging. You can use your J-Link with it. It's uh, you know that just you just get that. Um, but the part itself has a bunch of actual really decent things in it. So let's just very quickly go through this. It clocks at 24 megahertz, has 20k of flash, 3k of SRAM, and comes in a bunch of different package sizes, um, along with the one other odd package. It has a, an advanced uh, control timer with four outputs plus two complementary pairs for driving H bridges for motor driving. That's really cool. One low power timer, one general purpose timer, a one mega sample per second 12-bit ADC with six uh, external channels, so analog to digital conversion at a pretty high rate. Um, two comparators, a basic watchdog timer, one SPI, I squared C, and US art peripheral. Uh, since this is a Cortex M0, you get serial wire debugging. Yes. Um, and this is just one of the versions of it. There's various versions. And the article goes on to, uh, the blog post goes on to kind of ask some questions like, are these STM32 clones? In short, no. Um, what's the documentation of them like? In short, better than a lot of other very cheap parts from China. Um, but also, um, not just that, talking about the fact that they wanted to work with this uh, in the way that they like working with it. So i.e. in VS Code. Um, and uh, yeah, here, yeah, VS Code, Cortex Debug, and GCC-based solution, which took a bit more fiddling. How However, they've also shared their working. If you go to Jay Carlson's GitHub, they have a template uh, project for working with the uh, uh, PY32, um, which yeah makes it a lot easier for anyone else who wants to get on with uh, working with these things. And 
talks about flashing and debugging using the chips themselves and gives a general uh, kind of final thoughts and talking about different chips of similar prices. It's just really nice to see such a detailed uh, but still high level enough for someone like me to enjoy run through of um, a, a part which seems insanely cheap to me. Uh, the idea that you can actually get a 32-bit microcontroller that, um, you know, that has an ARM Cortex-M0 in it for so very cheap is incredible and it's no surprise in a way that we're able to get such complex devices built these days with if there are parts like this available that are flashable i.e you could buy um a, you know if you had a, a rough idea for a design that you knew would work on this kind of microcontroller you could get one of these chips to just do your entire development on from start to finish knowing that the part was that cheap knowing that when it came to production you wouldn't need to necessarily worry about stm32s being out of stock and that you can get a huge amount of these things for a very very cheap price um, and yeah, it's the first uh, time I've been um, made aware of Jay Carlson's blog. I did not know this existed, and it seems very, very interesting indeed, one I'll be coming back to. But if you would like to know what the cheapest flash microcontroller you can buy right now is, it certainly appears that it's going to be a 32-bit ARM Cortex M0+, Plus, which is not something I'd expect to be saying ever. Now, moving on to Big Clive. I'm fairly confident if you watch this channel, you're already a Big Clive fan. Um, he's certainly the person that got me interested in talking about things on the internet. And the fact that I have been watching him make videos like this for so many years, and then later started watching his live streams, which are an absolute hoot. And uh, I know people in his community just through the chat on his channel, which is sort of amazing. Um, yeah, you'll, you, you probably know who Big Clive is. On the off chance that you don't, um, he describes himself, or at least for a while, of being the person who just went for the worst of the worst, cheapest electronics that he could find on eBay, and took them apart and said why they are terrible, um, while teaching people good electronics practice practice along the way. Um, and this is about battery management. Um, and what he's showing you here is something that you absolutely should never do, which is just wire up a lithium cell to a 5 volt output, as you can see it is there, to charge it. This is bad for so many reasons. However, at the top of the screen right here, you're seeing um, what I'm going to be getting onto in just a moment. Now, I will be linking this video in the description. It's not new by any means. This is a year or so ago, I think this came out. Oh, only seven months ago. Um, but he's talking about these little battery management um, boards that you can get, which work for a variety of lithium ion batteries, um, and uh, they are great things. And the reason that I wanted to talk about this video now is because the next thing that we're going to talk about is very similar to this, um, and it just brought back memories of this video, and it is a wonderful rundown of um, yeah how you use these generic BMS systems in your project, and as a lot of us do work with microcontrollers and want to make them battery powered, it's a great primer to that subject. Which brings us on to this Hackaday article and Hackaday project by DIY Guy Chris. Now the project is here, and um, what I'm actually going to do, however, is link the Hackaday write-up about it because it gives a nice write-up of what exactly what this is about. Um, but yes, uh, those uh, battery management system uh, little boards that you saw in the uh, Big Cly video, the ones that are very widely available, are usually built around a, a few different ICs. One of which is the TP4056. Now, um, what DIY Guy Chris has done here has built a sort of uh, basic version of this circuit which can be expanded and then put into different circuits. The idea here being if you don't want to have a dedicated separate board for this and you want to integrate it into your PCB, this is sort of like, I think he calls it a boilerplate design. Yeah, a boilerplate battery protection circuit. So um, there's a video for it as well on the DIY Guy Chris channel, which I'm sure some of you might already be familiar with. Um, and if you are someone who is wanting to put lithium batteries into your designs and you a little bit kind of separate from the idea of actually buying a separate board for it. Maybe you're into designing your own PCBs at this stage, or maybe you want to just try building one from scratch. This is a great place to start. Because as it says, a step-by-step -step guidance and fully documented article will certainly help you develop your own lithium battery charging circuit with a protective charging output. Um, I am yet to get through the entirety of it, but the beauty of this is that this doesn't just tell you how to make your own PCB or how to integrate it into your designs. It gives you a working understanding of how these battery protection units work, as, did the, as does the video from Big Clive as well, um, and how you might want to integrate it into your designs. Now, before we move on from this, just one final thing. Going back to the Big Clive video, there is a comment here that I think is very important to anyone who is thinking of using um, some of these charging circuits. This is a specific, about, specific to the one in this video, but I imagine this is an issue that is a problem with various battery management systems. So, this is from Oscar Charlie. 
One important thing to bear in mind about the board with the TP4506 and the DW01, if you try to use it while charging the cell, the TP4506 will see the charge current as well as the load current and will never reach the charge termination point, potentially overcharging the cell. So use that board to either charge the cell or protect it during use, but not both at the same time. Now, that's something that had never once occurred to me before. Um, I've always wondered why my little battery power bank doesn't let you charge it from the wall while charging from it as well, using it as a sort of um, un un uninterruptible power supply, as it were. And, well, that'll be exactly why. So, as always, I'll leave a link to this and everything I talk about on this show in the description of the video. And by the way, if there is ever anything I say in the show, hey, I'll leave a link to that in the description and you find that I haven't, uh, please do tell me in the comment section. Occasionally these things do slip my mind. I have a list of stuff that I know I'm going to talk about on the show, but occasionally um, I'll magically remember something from somewhere else and I'll forget to put it in the description. So please do shout at me in the comments if I forget. Um, and uh, yes, if you are planning on uh, building your own BMS, do tell me about it. Do leave a link in the description. Uh, do, sorry, tell me in the comment section. Um, what you are planning to do with it um, because uh, yeah I'm always very interested to hear what projects people are working on so that has been our show for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for the continued support that you are showing Electromaker. Um, as I was saying towards the end of last year, there was a lot of exciting things um, happening this year, and one of them was the product of the week, and I'm very glad to finally be able to announce it to you and show you. Um, and in fact, it happened completely separately to me. As I may have mentioned during the show, product of the week is a very professional thing put together by an amazingly professional team, and it's wonderful to see on Electromaker, because I am, as I have always been, just an idiot in an attic talking about things with great enthusiasm, um, and uh, it's so nice to see, uh, yeah, the very fancy things happening uh, with Electromaker as well. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you to all of you who uh, sent such kind messages over the time uh, towards the end of last year that I wasn't doing so many shows. I've had quite a few messages from people saying not only that, you know, they were concerned about how I was doing in that time, but that I'm, they're very glad to see that I'm back to doing regular shows once again. And yes, everything is absolutely fine with me. Thank you for your concern. Um, so yes, uh, all the usual stuff. Thank you for doing the YouTube likes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, buy stuff from the Electromaker store. It's the best way to support us. And as always, have a fun, safe and creative week and I will chat to you soon. <laughs>